You need to start a podcast for sure. But a huge percent of podcasters don't make money. For sure. So why am I starting a podcast? It's something that everybody needs right now. If you have a product or a service, you need a way to get your audience to know, like, and trust you. You can't build trust with 60 second videos. There'll be many, many more podcasters by the year 2030. And you starting now really makes you one of the godfathers of it. It has to work where it has to work. Welcome to an episode of Circle of Greatness, man. This is this is an exciting episode, man. This is a partner of mine, uh, a friend of mine, a client. He coached me. I coach him. It's just, it's great to have people like this. And you guys know him as, I like to call him the podcast king, mm -hmm. David Winf Winfrey, <laughs> all around <laughs> entrepreneur, y'all. What's up, Doc? Welcome How to the good, show. David Shands, y'all. Happy to be here, man. This yeah. is dope. This is, yeah, said it's nicer than mine. No, it's not nicer than yours. You? No, Golly, no. this is fire, bro. <laughs> hey, I love I, it. I, you coached me on this, man. Yeah, like, man. so. I put you on my uh, my presentation slide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, hey. Like, it's about Normally, I need royalties story. when people use me like <laughs> I that. I just put a video. I was like, yo, I'm using you as a testimonial. He's like, yo, I ain't even launched my joint yet. Yeah. I'm still putting you in that joint. Yeah, no, but no, <laughs> I just got to say it. Uh, like, you really, like, this dude, you helped me with all my questions. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, hey, how should I angle? Like, so for those who are listening, our episodes is, is master class style. I got that from you. You said, bro. How, how long we going to just keep interviewing people, just being regular? Get on here and actually get a coaching session. Yeah. So now I'm getting on here. I'm doing what you told me to do. Teach me how to do this. Teach me how to do that. Like, yeah, I get a little bit of the backstory. I haven't found nobody that could do that better than you. Just how you <laughs> you dissect their story from birth in chronological order till now. <laughs> I, I tried them. Like, that don't work for me. So <laughs> even on this episode, you know, they already know. Well, some, for those who don't know you. Um, they know if you know you, we know your story. So yeah. I'll get a little bit of the backstory, but I want you to teach people how to become a content creator or a podcaster. On this yeah, episode, for sure. Bro. Even to that point, like there's always backstory. Like, yeah. uh, so I start my I start my backstory when someone's like, "Yo, tell me your start." I start my backstory pretty much at the Cheesecake Factory and working my job where I'm I'm trying to figure it out, trying to make some money. Then I start a t-shirt line, then I quit. Right, but. I choose to start my backstory there in my 20s. But I still got more backstory yeah. when I was a kid. Or, like, there could be backstory of the podcast, right? So I'll start the story, the backstory of the podcast. So even as I'm interviewing people, I'm trying to identify where I want the backstory to start. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when you're a kid, it's not relevant. Yeah. Unless you're dealing with something that you can't explain, and now we got to go back, yo, okay, what did you see when you were a kid that that's showing up now, right? So now I got I got to go all the way back to the like the beginning of your backstory. But and some of the backstory mm -hmm. is um your parents' backstory, the things that they taught you, where'd they get that from? And then now we're leading up. But it's all just deciding where you gotta get the backstory. Yeah. But it's identifying where the backstory is. So when you're doing a podcast, even mastermind style, like what I'm doing, we still need to get the backstory. Yeah, there's always like, a backstory. Like we did with Damien. Like I just talked about how he uh, he used to sell like he in the 10, 15 mall selling hair irons. Yeah. But then now he's in restaurant. We only touched on it for a minute. Let's let's talk about the restaurant business. 100. percent If let's say I got uh, I got locked up today, we did. Let's say we're doing an interview tomorrow. I got locked up today, and I come here, I'm like, yo, I got locked up yesterday. You're going to want to know the backstory, right? right? Yeah. But are you talking about backstory of when I was working at the Cheesecake Factory or the backstory of what happened when I woke up in the morning, mm -hmm. right? And then that's backstory. I'm just saying for the people that are listening that want to start a podcast, you got to identify how you want to guide the conversation. Yeah. The backstory of what I got locked up for yesterday, now I'm doing this interview the next day, it's like, yo, so what happened? Man, I got pulled over. I ain't have my I ain't have my license on you. Yo, why how you miss your license? Oh, I was at the house and this happened and that happened in a series of events. We don't got time for all like someone's forever backstory, but you so, gotta identify where that's going to So be step at. one, the art of the interview is get some sort of backstory, but identify where it needs to be at. Correct. Where the backstory starts. Let me get before we go there, how do I decide on what is my podcast topic? Or how do I decide on what niche I want to focus on yeah well you already decided that now with, and I'm saying and this for somebody listening right, like somebody right. like yo I want to I know I'm in the entrepreneurship yeah. space but you might be a doctor or something right. somebody listening like how do you decide on what should your niche be 
Um, I think you just pick something like whatever you're, you know, um, comfortable with whatever you're starting a podcast for. So I've been like pressing my wife, not pressing. I've been, I've been like dripping the content, the the idea on her that she needs to start, um, a podcast for mothers. Now she only has, she has a backstory starting with Corey cause Corey is now 12, but most recently Sarai is two and our son saw him as four months. But I've been I've been like, yo, you really need to start this podcast around motherhood. But I didn't get the idea because she's a mother. It's like she keeps getting these phone calls from mothers, like in tears, like, yo, I don't know what to do. Like, I don't know what's going on. This is my first child, and da-da-da. And she's sitting there listening and kind of giving her her uh her advice. But even the people on the other phone don't know that she ain't got it figured out either. She still be like, yo, I don't know what's going on. But the point is, I want her to start a podcast to help this particular situation that keeps coming up. There's a need here. And she's not, I'm not saying, yo, we need to make more money, babe. I need you to start a podcast. I'm saying she needs to start it, one, to help some people that she's helping already on a mass scale. And two, I think just in this whole podcasting space, it'll help you really find your, um, it's, it's an outlet. You feel free. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, I, I I think everybody needs to start a podcast, bro. Especially if you're an entrepreneur, you need a business, you need to start a podcast for sure. I hear you talk about it, and and I just want to ask this, since we basically making this like the art of podcasting, should you ask yourself why, though? Am I doing this? Because I, I don't know the percent, but a huge percent of podcasters don't make money. For sure. So why am I starting a podcast? When you say everybody should do it, why, David? Well, you're an entrepreneur, right? Yeah. A huge percentage of entrepreneurs don't make money. Yeah, true. So what advice would you give? Here you go with the switching the. Uh... I'm just saying, <laughs> like it's pie, the the yeah. the rate of podcasting is no different than the rate of anything no, else, you. bro. Yeah, we were just sense. talking about the restaurant industry, right? Yeah. Where um, uh, someone was telling me that 90 percent of restaurants fail. Most restaurants don't make any money. Not only do they not make money, they typically go into debt. So. After it's done, they're in deeper water than they went when they started. Mm. But you wouldn't tell people if you got an idea, don't start a restaurant because of like what's happening in that particular category. You you do it. At least with podcasting, it's something that everybody needs right now. If you have a product or a service, you need a way to get your audience to know, like, and trust you. Mm -hmm. You can't build trust with 60 second videos. Right. That's a this fact. long form joint, people are getting to know more about you to say, yo, I do want to be in the cir the uh, the cir circle of greatness. Yeah. What's the mastermind? Cir inner circle. Master the inner circle. The greatness mastermind. I want to be in the yeah. inner circle. Oh, I trust Neil now. He a real dude. Yeah. I saw his ads. I saw his 30 second clips. But, yo, I he really is a student. Right. I'm willing to give you 75,000. Yeah. So what if you podcast for only a year? Two, put that, only Only 75,000. Yeah. Yeah. So what if you podcast for a year, you don't make no money, but you get one client because they know they now trust you. Right. Or even if you don't make no money and you get an opportunity to sit across the, 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 the table from people who really are dominating a space, and you get game and information. What's the, what what if, is that worth? What That's if you're price. doing it yourself and you're not even interviewing anybody, but because you got to come on here and do a podcast and give information on a topic, it forces you to research and learn and spit some game every single week. So mm. you got 52 pieces of content and 52 pieces of information that you never would have got. Even if you don't nobody watch it, you're now a better presenter. You're more That's educated in the space. I'm trying to understand why people don't start a podcast. I don't get it. I didn't, how you just broke it down and really make, because I became a better speaker by doing it when I was doing weekly webinars. I didn't become a better speaker by a coach uh, mm -hmm. necessarily like, oh, do this. No, I did it. I did it for such a long period of time. And just this one concept, and I'll, I'll say this for me, everything that I do, I'm trying to see how I can get three to four things out of it. Like, mm -hmm. I don't want to do a singular thing anymore. Yeah. Like, if I do this, how can I make three to four things out of it? So a podcast, you're saying podcast done, 52 pieces of long form content. Now you're chopping right. that up on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube shorts, Facebook yep. shorts. Uh, you're now interviewing somebody who you may want to coach you or get free advice. Yep. Yep. You are now being seen as an authority. Yep. All, all roads are leading to start all a podcast. All roads. Yeah. I'm really, somebody's going to have to try to, and I haven't anybody like convinced me yet. I'm trying to get somebody to convince me. If you're already on social media, why you don't have a podcast? 
And some people are like, yo, well, I don't got time to make it. Well, how long does it take to make a really good YouTube, or not YouTube, but an Instagram video? So you gotta you gotta you gotta think of what to say first off. Then you gotta say it. Then you are gonna take four takes, and then you gotta edit it. You gotta put the little caption and words on there. Then you gotta come up with a a, a, a caption or whatever. Each piece now. So let's say you're doing two pieces a week. That's fourteen pieces. It's taking hours. It might take an hour to set up this camera. You get in front of the camera, da da da, da run it all off, run it all off, and you could take all that content. You got a month's worth of content from two episodes. Got it. So I, I mean it's. It's not that it doesn't. How you develop the content? So, so I already came up with my niche. Mm-hmm. I already know my topic. I mean, I already got my niche. How are you coming up with? And I saw you do an ac- exercise around having people write fifty topics. But mm-hmm. is that how am I coming up? Chance, I don't know what to say. You going to chat GPT? <laughs> like, well, we, we, I mean, I think if you're starting, you have some sort of idea or affinity for it. Yeah. And if you do, you know what that audience is dealing with. Okay. So if a a person, I don't know, a fisherman, right? And they want to start a podcast. Be like, yo, I love fishing. I want to teach people fishing. If you want to teach somebody something or you're trying to share something with somebody, you know the things that they deal with. There's a million types of different bait for a million types of different fish. That's a topic. Yeah. Or like, yo, should you, what's the difference between going fishing in the ocean versus, is the ocean and the sea is different, right? I think it's the same. It's the same thing. Or the ocean... It's different bodies of water, right? You can go fishing in a lake, maybe. Yeah, lake There's probably a di- yeah. There's a difference in all of it. That's a that's a topic. All like fishing rods are not made the same. Actually, the string on the fishing rods are different. Like you got you know what people are dealing with. Right. You can teach patience. Like what's the best time to go fishing? High tide, low tide. So you know what people want. Got it. But here's the hack. You can go to um, a website called uh, Answer the Public. Answer the public, yeah. Neil Patel site, I believe. Is it? Yeah. Oh, shout out to Neil. You can put in any topic, and it's going to shoot out literally hundreds of uh, topics around that particular topic. It's going to do the who, who, what, why, when, and how, or meaning, like, let's say fishing, who. It'll come out with, like, okay, who are the right, uh, who are the most famous fishermen? Who are the best fishermen in the world? Who is perfect to be a fisherman? Uh, how old should you be a fisher? I, like, there's there's so many things. The who, what, when, where, and how, and it just shoots out all the things that Google is telling you already. So that's powerful. All right, yeah. so let's let's. So we got that now because I literally want them to leave here. They could get up. What are what am what do I need to do equipment wise? Am I starting this? You got a studio. You spent yeah. a bunch of money on there. You didn't start that way. I used to see you do your videos. You literally setting up equipment yourself. You're editing. Like, but I also see when Gary Vee used to talk about Anchor. What is what is the way that people should start? Um, are we talking about equipment first? I mean, because this it may be, you may don't need equipment if you use an Anchor and you just open up your phone and just talking in your phone. So that's what I'm saying. What Which way are you recommending people? Well, there's not, I, I recommend people start wherever they are. Yeah. If you can put a little money in equipment, get the equipment. If you're just going to do, do it on your phone, do it on your phone. But here's my advice on getting equipment. Yeah. Everybody's listening. Whatever there's like, there's like a an electronic store in your area, whether it's Best Buy, um, Guitar Center, Micro Center, whatever. I want you to go to the store and there's a guy named Joe there. I'm telling you, there's a guy in the electronics se- section named Joe. He knows all about cameras and mics. Yep. I like people are like, yo, what camera should I get? Yo, go to Best Buy, ask for Joe. And they'll be like, well, Joe ain't here. But there's another person in the camera department that knows something about cameras. And you say, hey, I want to start a podcast. This is how much money I got. They're going to walk you through the different types of cameras, the budgets, the different mics. All like they're going to go through all that stuff because they know it. Like they do this stuff every single day. And like the company reps, they send like like Sony, they'll send a rep into the store to train the staff on their particular cameras. So Sony, Samsung, all of them are teaching them how to like, you know, the benefits, pros and cons. And then people are coming in there and buying them and they're getting educated that way. So if you need some equipment, just go to the store and ask for Joe. His name, his name might not be Joe. It might be Drew. It might be um, Sarah. It might be somebody's in that department that knows something about something. And you just ask them, what type of equipment do I need? If not, just record on your phone, get like a little mic and put it up and then gradually like kind of progress. Tell me about the distribution though, because I was on one platform and you had me go to another one for the distribution. Like, Where was you on? 
uh, I was. You was on Podbean, right? Podbean. Yeah, and, and I actually years. liked and it. Then I went to um, I went to Red Circle that you mm. talk about. Yeah, but I was telling you, you can stay on Podbean too. So that doesn't matter. No, it don't matter. Right, cool. I mean, you go through like, um, just compare. They all do the same thing. So a podcast distribution platform. It's like you have an audio file. Like we're going to record this audio and it's going to go on an SD card. We take the SD card, put it in our computer, and we upload it to a podcast distribution platform. Whether it's Anchor, Red Circle, Libsyn, uh, Podbean. Uh, there, there's so many of them. There's, there's dozens of them. But they all do the same thing. You upload it to that one that you pick, and that one distributes it to Apple, Spotify, Amazon, um, all these different platforms. Actually, Podbean has more distribution platforms than Podbean sends it to more um, uh, podcast hosting sites than Red Circle did. That's why I was looking at it like, you can stay there. It's cool. Right, right. But it's just Red Circle pays, so. Yeah, I want I want to get paid. Let's talk about monetizing, bro. How do you monetize? Two things. How do you monetize and how should we be better at monetizing our podcast? Do you know the first way I started monetizing? Yeah. What The second way. The first way is I started Building the podcast simply to sell conf- uh, tickets to a conference. Yeah. So I'm doing this conference. I didn't know that. So you initially started the podcast to sell tickets to a conference. Yeah. So you ain't got my backstory on how yeah. I started podcasting. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. I don't know. Why did you really? I didn't. I, ne- I never knew because it's you 300 episodes in, bro. Yeah. That's, how many years has that been now? 2017, 18, around you, there. You know what I want people to really take from this is consistency. Yeah. A lot of people like Shan's be on my podcast, and the first question I ask, how many episodes you got? Like I don't even the I don't get on your podcast till you got 50 episodes. Mm. Cause to me, it shows that you're actually being consistent and you're yeah. you stuck with it. Yeah. 317 episodes, you stuck with 100%, it. hundred yeah. percent. Absolutely. Uh, we actually dropped 344 this morning, so. Okay, well, sorry, 344. <laughs> Golly. Nah, my objective was uh, I was doing a conference called uh, Social Proof, Social Proof Conference, teaching entrepreneurship, got a bunch of my friends, and ticket sales were slow. And I said, yo, what I'm going to do is I'm going to interview the, the speakers because if I interview the speakers, we might sell more tickets. So, for instance, if Neo was speaking at the conference, I'm going to interview you, put it on YouTube. I want to highlight how amazing you are. And I'm thinking if I put it on YouTube, then someone might say, yo, I want to meet Neo in person. I'm like, and you, if you look at them first episodes, you see at the end, I'm like, yo, April 4th, make sure y'all make it to the Social Proof Conference. And I just kept doing that. But then after the conference, I stopped because that was the whole reason I was doing it. Right. And then uh, the next year, we started kicking it back up. So I started the interviews again. And uh, eventually... I just started to get consistent because uh, I was sitting with Rashad and Troy. They was like, yo, I love your podcast, man. You're just not consistent with it. Mm. I'm like, dang, bro. You don't even know me like that. You're talking to me like You this. know, when I, I interviewed Shadi on my podcast, they didn't have a podcast yet. Mm. It's crazy. I don't even know. Why did I start a podcast? Because, I wait, did I have mine before you too? Yeah, you had it before everybody. Yeah, I didn't even know that. I don't even know why I started, though, yeah. a podcast. I have no clue what made me start a Back podcast. Back then, we didn't even know what a podcast was, if you think I about know, it. Bro. You see, but what if I would have stuck with it, man? You'd have been the GOAT. You're still the GOAT, but Dang. you would definitely dominate the space. Yeah, at least up up a top podcaster, I yeah, can say that Yeah, for sure. Much. But there will be many, many more podcasters by the year 2030, and you starting now really makes you one of the godfathers of it. Hey guys, listen, man, I hope you are getting so much game on this episode. I had to stop it for a minute, right? My brother, David Shans, has something called the Morning Meetup that I truly believe one of the best communities for entrepreneurs. And what I want to be able to give you is give you a free trial to be able to join his program today. So the link is going to be in the description, right? Where we're going to literally help you have a meeting every single day with six, seven, and eight figure entrepreneurs helping you get to that next level. So again, I had to stop the episode. I know he's talking about podcasts and talking about getting to the next level, but I had to share what helped me get to the next level and help him get to the next level. And that's being in communities like this. So go ahead and click the link in the description below and uh, let's get back to the episode. Wow. Just think about it. In a few years, like I've been 2018, so it's been maybe like four years, almost four, five years or so. And people are like, yo, you've been doing it for a minute. But Joe Rogan been podcast. He started 13, 14 years ago. Crazy. And now look at what happened. 
Yeah. Not that he's the best podcaster in the world, but he he built it brick by brick and started for a minute ago. So so I'm trying to do what you do, but co- get co- am I doing this right or no? Bro? You're doing great. All right, just because I don't know some of these questions aren't like high level, but I feel like they somebody don't have a podcast. I'm taking you through the journey. What do you want to know? I'm gonna ask you a few things, but I want to. You taught me everything I need to know whole, already. No, I didn't. I mean, you taught me a lot of. Th- you you taught me to this point. I'm saying. Yeah, but there's so much more. Okay, but you get it. my whole podcast and stuff. I want to know. Okay. I bro, I'm not even thinking about them. Okay. Honestly, I, like I'm, when I'm, when I'm all these questions, I've been thinking about because I wouldn't ask none of it how to start because I already did all that crap. Yeah, it's just straight. For for sure, but even in the starting. There's probably some foundational stuff you missed. Yeah. Well, you post. You the one that I'm asking you how to start. Like how I develop, how I develop my interview style, stuff like that, right? Because you don't have your own interview style just yet. I don't. No. Yeah, that's why. You is think this? You got one? No, is this masterclass? That's what I'm saying you the one told me this. this yes. Style. Well, I'm saying the most. But it's of the not dialed in though. For sure, most of the interviews should be selfish. Because then it's not questions anymore. It's not questions like to entertain nobody. It's like, yeah, yo, it's I'm new. trying to get my show better. Yo, I'm trying to monetize. Like, I, I, I want to grow. Got it. I want to make sure I start right. I'm sure there's somebody in your um, your network or your 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 clients or something or your family, wife, kids that you think, yo, it'd be dope for them to start a podcast. So you talked about level one of monetizing. You literally could sell products. You talked about level two. I don't know if that's the uh, play. No, yeah. So number you were responsible for my second. It's really my first way of like really monetizing. Because first it was just I'm monetizing the interview to sell tickets to a conference. Yeah. But I got I forgot who I was interviewing. And Neil happened to be there. And after the interview was over. Made you a lot of money too, though. <laughs> millions, bro. <It> was crazy. <laughs> I he said um he said yo uh young young you don't do an affiliate and I was like what's an affiliate mm-hmm. like I I remember I remember it like it was yesterday I was like what's an affiliate he was like yo they got a course and y'all just sold the course the whole time and you just like when they buy it click the link you get a piece of that I'm like word mm-hmm. so I think I asked the person like yo you got an affiliate I promise you I didn't know what it was and he was like yeah I set you up I'm like really. <laughs> so then I, I, I that's been my question yeah you know what I mean like that yo you got an affiliate yeah. yo let's split it let's you know what I mean if, if people buy this then I should get some and yeah it was crazy game changer for the game business game changer why so many podcasters still aren't doing it bro they ain't watched this interview yet yeah hopefully they they gonna they gonna <laughs> catch you on then but yeah, it's, for sure. it's all right so that's two yep. give me 10 ways to monetize a podcast like because we're not fully monetizing in every area mm-hmm. so give me neo here's what you need to be doing to better monetize this right. podcast um every view has some sort of value yep so if you got a hundred views on your podcast um someone will pay to get in front of those hundred people I don't. I, it may not be a thousand dollars. It might not be twenty grand. But if I had a room full of people, a hundred people, right? And I was like, "Yo, I want, I, I want you to come speak in front of these people. You could sell whatever you want to sell, but you just give me some money to speak in front of these hundred people. How much would you charge? How much would you pay me? To how much would I pay you to speak in front? How of How much would people? you pay me to speak in front of a hundred people if you got an offer? A couple thousand. A couple on, thousand? I mean, depending on the quality, depending on the type of person. Yes, it depends. What if you had, what if I had an audience of 20 people? Yeah. How much, quite possibly, they might buy something that you offer. It's just 20 people. How much would you pay me? If I say, yo, you can get in front of these 20 people. 500 to a thousand dollars, maybe. 500 to a thousand. And it all, and this is all depending on the quality of the people. A hundred percent. Let's say it's the, let's say it's the lowest quality. Okay. It's twenty people. You can stand in front of them and pitch your offer. How much would you? Be, how much would you give me? I I will ask, can I do it for free, or I give you? And minimum. I'm like, nah, you gotta give me something. How much would you give me? Hundred dollars. A hundred dollars. Yeah. Meaning, an audience of twenty has some sort of value of a hundred dollars. You do it all the time, running ads, right? Yo, I'm gonna give you Facebook X amount of dollars to put me in front of a thousand people. Mm-hmm. I might not sell nothing, but it's a possibility. That's why I'm running the ads. Yeah. So 
you can ask anybody based on whatever number you have. Y'all, I'm only getting 200 downloads. Well, I'll put you in front of 200 out downloads. I give you $10. All right, bet. Give me the 10 bucks. I'll shoot a little ad. Mm -hmm. I ain't making no money anyway. Give me 20 bucks. I ain't every Every view has some sort of value. Ask any social media platform. Everybody has a value. So you pretty much just ask people for money to get in front of your audience. It may not be tens of thousands of dollars. It might be 20 bucks. And you're doing four episodes a month and you make $80 because you got a sponsor giving you $20. They're paying your light bill okay. for something you're going to do anyway. All right, guy, I hear that. But what about me now? That's that 20 ain't gonna do nothing. So how do I get how do I get all my my podcast sponsored? Meaning the amount of money that we produce in episodes. You know, like I, I paid for sponsorship on several of your episodes, yeah. right? How do are you going I, I think I approached you. Like yeah. oh, am I just hitting people like bro, I got this out. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. No, I think I did ask you. Okay. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. yeah. I'm just asking you. I, I got an audience. Give me some money. I, my my first um, and you was doing this based on not telling me the downloads. You didn't ask. <laughs> yeah, I know. Just look Nobody at the views on asked. the YouTube channel. Nobody right. asks, bro. Because right. even if I said, "All right, bet," well, I'm getting about twenty three dollars per CPM. Yeah. So you could give me. You don't know what that means. Yeah, I do. Uh, I mean, yeah, but, uh, cost for per a yeah, thousand. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. But even most people, that, even if you know it, how to calculate it yeah. is tough. Yeah. Right. That's and true. nobody cares. So what I'm saying is if you have a podcast and you uh, you have some sort of offer, just sell the fact that they can get in front of that that audience. And if we put it on YouTube, it lasts forever. Mm. You never know when that joint when that going, video hit a gear. might take off. Yeah. yeah. How so, can a video hit a gear? Um, there's a lot of different factors. One. You Give me one of the ones that y'all did. Like you got an episode yeah. you remember that went from here to yeah. One for that to happen, it has to be a good episode. Got it. It's got to be good. But something that like pushes it is the title. Mm -hmm. So sometimes the the objective is like baiting someone into experiencing this this video, right? So if the title is right, if the title says, um, I got one title. It said. How to buy 33 cars in two weeks. Mm -hmm. It was Maddie J's episode. It's something like that. I baited people in because somebody's wondering, like, yo, wouldn't it be cool to buy 33 cars? Yeah. And somebody was like, yo, who needs 33 cars? Yeah. But they're interested, so they click it. Mm -hmm. And then it's a good episode. So, you know, they keep sharing it with people. And then we had a dope affiliate on that. So one thing is the title. So you how much you use, make off of that? Uh I don't know. Uh, Tens of thousands. Wow. I was looking at uh, Ash Cash episode and, um, well, off of, no, I, I made six figures on like the whole thing, but just YouTube, like on Ash Cash episode, I, like I was looking at yesterday, it was like $15,000 from that episode. Right. That YouTube just AdSense YouTube. page. Just yeah. YouTube AdSense. Yeah. But so the episode was Maddie, fire? You and Maddie? Yeah. You, you and Ash Cash episode? Yeah. yeah it was what was fun. it on? Uh, Abundance and Ash Cash doing what he do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I've, I made High hundreds energy. of. Maddie's paid me hundreds of thousands from uh from affiliates. Wow, hundreds of thousands. Wow, from an affiliate. That's crazy. Push me a Mitch too. With from the from play. doing an episode. Zo six figures for sure. Yeah, affiliates. Thanks, man. <laughs> well, well, where's my <laughs> cut, dog? <laughs> um, another thing. You I can need do. some more money from you, dog. You can, here's the thing. You can charge people to be on the show. You didn't hear what I just said. I need I some didn't more even money, hear it. dog. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, boy, get real quiet. When I you hear about Come on, can I, can I finish teaching people? Go ahead, man. Okay. You can charge people to be on your show even if you don't have a lot of views. Talk about that because somebody like, Sharon, I'm getting 100 views. I'm getting 500 views. How are you How are you approaching that? And how? tell me, give somebody the script for that. Here we go. Here we go. So let's say before you had a podcast, right? And I said, yo, Neo, you got a dope story. You got a dope product. But only thing I always see you do is making videos on your phone. And nobody really gets to ask questions. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to come to your, I'm gonna come to your office, set up some mics. I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions. You answer it. We're going to take those clips out. And get, I, give you, I give you 20 clips of that video. And you'll be able to put it up on your Instagram. You can put it up wherever you want to put it up. Like to be able to speak to your audience in a better way. You would pay me to do that. Mm -hmm. It's essentially a videographer, but the videographer actually thinks 
they just record instead of it's a service. So I'm telling people to like, yo, you need to learn how to podcast, learn how to set up a camera, learn how to set up mics, learn how to like edit a little bit so that you can offer this service for people. Mm -hmm. Start a podcast just so you know how to start a podcast and someone will pay you to help them start theirs or it could just be a content factory that you're creating for people. You understand what I'm saying? So that's why I teach people, yo, if you want a new career, start in podcasting so you can learn it so that you can help people spread their message and they'll pay for that. Yeah, I got that. But you still didn't tell me how do somebody pay me? Is that the how do somebody pay me to be on social proof? What do you mean? I thought when you were saying that, like, you can have people pay. I can have somebody yes. pay me to sit in that seat. 100%. That's what... How? So if you don't have any views, I'm saying, so let's say- Are I'm you saying you don't have no views that Let's you say do. I don't got no views like that, but I, I'm, I'm putting up the joint, get 100 views or whatever. I'm saying, Neo, I got a podcast, but the podcast, I want to interview you not for my podcast, but for you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit in a chair. I'm going to ask you direct questions. You, you can even tell me what direction you want to go in, like so that you can sell your product and service. Well, at, I'll extract all these answers from you give you a bunch of clips, give you some footage for your team to chop up. I'll put it on YouTube so it lives forever. And then we'll put a link in the video and we'll make some sales. So even if I don't have a lot of views, because it's a service helping you with your social media strategy, you'll pay me. Yeah, right. Got it. And I'm by, I'm by default growing my channel as well because I'm uploading the content to my podcast. Got it. All right. Number, we on number four. Number five, another way to make money. Um, AdSense. As you build your audience, uh, more people, uh, uh, your 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 distribution platform, like your Libsyn and your Anchor and all that kind of stuff, uh, they will start to pay you. So I got a the morning meetup. I'm on a morning meetup every day. It's live. We take the audio and we upload a couple uh, episodes per week, and I make money from that podcast every single month because the bigger your audience, the more people. These, these platforms, right? So let's say uh, Podbean or Libsyn. They have a whole team that's responsible for going to um, Microsoft and eBay and Tesla or whatever, and they secure an ad. They say, all right, well, um, I'm going to go to, uh, I just did an ad for, um, for LinkedIn. So I'd imagine that the guy, Joe, that works for Podbean, goes to um, LinkedIn and says, hey, we got all these podcasters. Give me $200,000 and we'll get you X amount of downloads. Mm -hmm. So they come back and they look at all their podcasters and say, okay, well, I'm going to give this person $100. I'm going to give this person $1,000. i am going to give this person $10,000, right? So that's, as you grow your audience, whatever distribution platform you're on, they probably have a team out there that's working hard to get money for the podcast because they want to keep me. I just got a, I got a text the other day from, uh, from my man at work at Red Star Offs. I can turn my phone off. Um, he was like, yo, I really love working with you, man. You, you, he's like, you're, you're my favorite podcaster to work for. Because he was like, yo, he sent me an ad, I respond. Can you uh, plug me with him? Yeah. 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 You want to do it now? My yeah. phone, I turn my phone uh, off to respect this I, recording. Okay, I got to make no, sure. No, I got you, though. I'll plug you. Because how, how am I going to start making money with that? Because I see you do the reads. Talk, talk mm. to me about how I could do the reads, how do I go get but more yeah, that's, reads? But that's, or that's, as my audience grows. For me, that's based on my audience growing. Got it, okay. I spent time having a, I, I spent so much time working on having a good show. Yeah. I wasn't thinking money. Yeah. I'm thinking, good. can I build a show that people like? Yeah. So I spent years on that. And then years later, I started 2017. I started making money 2020. That's three years of just focusing on how to have a good show. show yeah. And if you have a good show, then people start to share it and people want to get on and things of that nature. And now that it's grown, people are coming to me for advertisement. How so, can I hack growth? What is that way right now? You looking at 26,000 subs on YouTube. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many downloads that we're currently getting a month. Uh, 26,000 subs. I don't, them, our best up, we got a 16,000 views. Seven, it ain't like you're, you, you getting 50,000, 100,000, 200. Like, how do I hack the growth right now? Like, I'm trying to get there. What took you three years, I want to yeah. do in three months. What can sure. I do to do that right I now? Learned, I, I was talking to uh, Mike with EYL. Shout out to Mike. The guy's brilliant. Yeah. He said, yo, he'll run ads again. He's like, if something's performing, he'll run ads to promote that particular episode. 
Yeah, I saw him say that. And we were together. Yeah, for yeah, sure. I'm on that. Two episodes, two, two sponsors. When he said the two sponsorships in the front, what I'm trying to understand, are those our sponsorships that we are including or AdSense? Oh, no, AdSense. So he oh, said okay. on YouTube, you know, you could put the ad hashes in. Like, so if you're on YouTube and you have over 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch time hours, YouTube will help will allow you to monetize your page, right? So when you put a video in, it'll say, you know, where do you want to monetize, right? You can click a mid-roll management or something like that. And he was saying put two, two ads in the front. Now, it's not saying that it's automatically you put 20 ads like this is going to pay you, but um, it gives you a better chance to make money with yeah. your audience. So but if we're hacking, mm -hmm. go ahead. No, I'm listening. Go ahead. Um, hacking growth, I think the first thing you got to do is identify as this podcaster or content creator. You got to like own the identity of it. Because you, how do yeah. I do that with with so much going on? I got yeah. a lot going on. It's just one of the things we got going on. You gotta lean in. You gotta stop doing so much. I gotta get this bread though. Go get the bread. I'm just saying, in the marketing effort of event spaces, it's going. People aren't gonna believe that you're a podcaster. Right. And if you're not a podcaster, people aren't gonna like really be locked. People are locked into like my podcast, J Hill Podcast. Like, we love it. And we identify it. Our whole world is about this podcast. So when you think of a podcast, you think of me. When people think of Neo, they don't think of podcasts. They probably think of event space. They probably think of e uh, digital marketing yeah, because true. you leaned in. And when you leaned into that, it paid off. It made you money. Right. So at some point, you're going to have to give up something to switch gears. I don't know how that's going to be or if it's beneficial, mm -hmm. but... In terms of this podcasting space, you're going to have to start waving your podcast flag. Like, yo, this is what I do. This is what I want to be respected for. Mm. That's the only way? Well, yeah. for, in my perspective. But but when you say that, how do you stand out amongst... You got so many podcasters, bro. How do you stand out amongst these people? How many people are owning the identity of a podcast? Who, Not many people. So think, you, so think of... Finesse, when I think about the Finesse, black yeah. audience, EYL. EYL. You, Finesse, EYL. Jay. Jay Hill. Everybody else is doing it because they're they're trying to push something else or they're doing it because they seen somebody do it. We live this every day. Ash cash, I guess. Ash cash. Yeah. Not many people. Whatever you and, lean and You know into. my other hack, you know my way is most people ain't willing to spend what I'm spending to drop mine. I could do this for a while and not make no money of it. Off yeah. of. Most people can't do that. You know that's where you need to spend the money, though? Where? Your ability to facilitate a conversation, though. Yeah. That's why I just hire you. The quality of the... You going to hire me? How much? Uh, you that's what's up. Same what you give me. Nothing. So <laughs> it's a barter it's a barter <laughs> situation right there. Well, yo, no matter how much you spend on these cameras and the team and the editing and all that kind of stuff, this is, this is a different space than digital marketing. Yeah. In marketing, the more you spend, the more you make. So what I need to do right now, you said facilitate a car. Walk me through how do I develop. And you say that, like, because I come, I'm, I don't got no questions prepared. I just wing this. Yeah. You don't got no questions prepared either. You just, it don't matter who you interviewing, you figure it out while you're going. But I'm assuming because you got a format. Yeah. What, what needs to be my format? I don't know what your format needs to be, but your education, for sure, you need to study podcasting. You need to study Arsenio Hall, you need to study Larry King, study Barbara Walters. Mm. You gotta study Angie Martinez. Angie Martinez, her podcast is so dope. From the very beginning of the conversation, she goes deep. It ain't no, hey, how you doing? It ain't no, like, like let's educate. Yo, know, she's going deep into the, it's almost like the first few minutes, it's a heaviness dropped and we're in it. But it's not even that she's saying yeah, in a I, sad way. How was that? That may be uncomfortable. It might be. But you still got to study the art and the craft. And that might not be your vibe. But yo, know, how do we create such a, a, uh, a heavy conversation that keeps people from the very beginning? How do you do that? Or you might go... So I'm interviewing my wife. Go ahead. Tell me about that. What you mean? What's it, what do I get start with? Interviewing your wife? Yeah. I don't know, bro. I ain't in that. No, you saying a heavy conversation where they got to listen. No, I'm not saying you need to do that. I need to, I, I'm saying you need to study the craft. Got it. 
I'm not saying that needs to be you. My, you're just I'm saying, saying that's that is a a, a aspect of what you're saying. Yeah, that's yeah. a a perspective. The fact that I noticed that yeah. means I'm studying. Got it. Not that I'm trying to tailor my conversations to that, but the fact that I see it, I know. So Jay Z, I mean David Letterman interviewed Jay Z on um, on his show on Netflix. Go watch; it's really really dope. And. Hey, what's up? You're looking at this video because you are enjoying the episode. What I need you to do right now, I need you to like, subscribe, and share this episode below. I'm not going to ask you for anything on this episode other than share this with a friend. My goal is literally for this to be one of the most impactful, one of the most powerful podcasts there are that moves people into action and takes people from where they are to where they want to be. And one other favorite I want to ask, can you leave in the comments below at least two to three different comments on your biggest takeaways, which you're loving the most, and one thing that you're going to do to push yourself closer to your goals and your dreams. So again, Thank you so much for tapping in. Get back to the episode. Closer to the end, I want to say it's like the 40-minute mark. David Letterman asked Jay-Z about cheating on his wife. If you were interviewing Jay-Z, you wouldn't ask that question. No, heck no. Who asked that stuff? I'm surprised he asked it. I'm surprised I, they let it slide. I remember me being a child watching David Letterman. When I was a kid, I was watching The Late Show with David Letterman. Meaning he's been doing this for a long time. My man interviewed Cardi B. I watched that. Bro, my man, he interviewed Kanye and it was like, he had to like, he had to, he was getting red and like angry, right? But he was still professional, which is dope. But my point is, he asked Jay-Z the question about cheating on his wife, but he never said, did you cheat on your wife? He starts with this story of how he said, he said, one more thing I want to share. He said, uh, and this is David Letterman talking. He said, I messed up one time. He said, uh, I was in a real bad situation. I did something dumb. And uh, the, my actions um, created a, a scenario that I could have lost my family. My wife, she might have ended up with uh, somebody else. And like, he just goes through this whole thing about his story. Yeah. And he looks at Jay-Z after he goes through all that. And he says, I was just wondering if you could relate to something like that. Yeah, I see. Scientific. Said, Yo, right. the only people that are going to notice that move is me, J. Hill. Maybe Finesse. Angie Martinez would notice it like, whoa, that was hard. But everybody else is just watching it. Oh, that's a good interview. What did Jay Z say? He danced around the answer. He danced around it for sure. But he had to address it. But but he was comfortable at least addressing it because he didn't say, so, man, Lemonade, was that about you? Did you cheat on Beyond? He didn't say that. But it's an, it's an art to it. Mm. You like in terms of marketing, you might go on somebody's funnel or see somebody's challenge and be like, oh, that was a move. Oh, I see how they did that. Oh, I'm gonna do that. I've seen you get excited about a certain element, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Marvin did his challenge and he getting all these people. You're like, I'm taking that. Yeah. When I saw it, I was like, wow, that's cool. Mm -hmm. But you noticed it because you're in it, you study it. Yeah. So I'm just saying, we gotta study the craft. Mm. Wow. This is a whole nother thing I got to study. Yeah. Just how you, you didn't get rich by not studying, bro. You were just studying something else. Now you're getting, I don't know if like podcasting, getting into this lane is the thing that you need to be doing. Right. That's that. what I was about to ask you is, it's the law of uh diminishing return or something like, like when does it, and this may, this is not necessary for me because I got to figure it out. You got to see what makes the most sense. Cause this may not be the thing that makes the most sense that I need to go study. Yeah. Right now, I do need to go study other things that's more pressing for me currently. Yeah. I mean, are you saying, when you say make I need the to go sense. buy more business. I need to go buy something that can cash flow faster. Right. This is going to cash flow me, but it's going to cash flow me. The work we're putting in may take a year or two. It's not a it's not a immediate cash. Me going to go buy a company? Yeah. Yeah. So that's that I can change. That's that's the question. Like when you say makes more sense, do you mean make more money? Yeah. Then For me maybe right the, now. Maybe this isn't the thing you need to be doing. If the, if the goal I'm is going to, make to do money, this, but I'm saying 100. But if you're saying how do I really grow it, I'm saying I don't know a way to grow it without identifying in the space because it's all about audience. It ain't just your name. Like there are a bunch of celebrities who have a big name and they ain't getting no downloads like that. Because people aren't enjoying it because they know that the person is just, they're not studying the craft. Yeah. 
You understand what I'm saying? So I don't know if it's the right thing for you right now. The people who coming on the network, are you teaching this, uh, what's it, method, methodology? Methodology? Yeah. Um, well, the Gen Z and- So y'all, we, we, we got a network that we got <laughs> right now where we bring on podcasters and stuff, but go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I'm letting, I'm letting them do their thing. I'm not teaching the art just yet. So with Donnie, and right now it's pretty much Donnie and the Growing Pains podcast. I'm just letting them get their, their feet wet to do it. And I'm having them work on something specific. So right now with the Growing Pains podcast, my focus isn't how do I create a good show? I'm trying to just develop some hustle in them because they're not grinding. They release on Saturdays. I'm in church on Saturday. I get out Saturday, and I'm looking at everybody's page. Nobody posted the episode that dropped today. Mm. I'm on them in the chat. Like, yo, what are we doing? I'm not here. Y'all want me to grow your show? You need to grow your show. I'm here as an assistant. I'm assisting it. So I got to get them to grind and hustle, and let me do that first, and then I can start shaping the conversations. Got it. Yep. So the growth hack to growing this is all around really going all in with some other ways to pull. Because most people want to, how do I pull more money out of this so I can retire? So I can, yeah. with some, a couple other moves to pull some more money out of the podcast. Um, like you selling merch now. Like yeah. that's a little, you've been selling merch, but now you got merch solely surrounded around yeah. the podcast now. Yeah, for sure. Merch. We just dropped the Patreon. Well, tell me about it. I was going to ask you about that. I see the Patreon play. Do I? Is that something you recommend that I do? Yeah, actually. Or do I need to build a bigger audience first? Actually, this is what I'm going to do with you, okay? We got to, as we're, we're growing our Patreon, right? But we got a system and a format for you. So what we're going to do is we'll run your Patreon. We just need a percentage of the growth. I'm not mad at that. See? Naya, what's up? I was just telling her. Yeah, so Patreon just, you create a paywall. Like, some people don't want to, listen to ads so for five dollars you can listen to the social group podcast no ads right mm. i also but am i am i losing money because if they listen to that ad i'll make more than the five dollars i have an episode that has a hundred thousand views mm -hmm. right if all hundred thousand people gave me five dollars i would make five hundred thousand off that at one episode that has never happened which means I'd rather charge somebody $5 a month to listen to my podcast. And that's one, two, a thousand, 10,000 views. It's not on YouTube, but if those 10,000 people are paying $10, I'll take the hundred thousand any day of the week. Yeah. So yes, it, it does like take away that one, two, three, however many people are on Patreon away from YouTube or the audio, but it's like a thousand X higher. Let me ask you this. So for Patreon, how, how you like the experience so far for my podcast? Like I want, I want, I want there not to be a comparable experience. Uh probably, probably not yet, but in another two months or so. Like I want like, oh, that was the best one I ever been on. Not just with the but the experience from greeting you at the door, bringing you in, mm -hmm. chef got your meal ready for you. We picking you up from wherever you at if you need to be picked up, package for you. Could I essentially, one, how you like the experience, but the second question is, what if I did the Patreon is like all of that? It gets you coming in, it gets us eating, and we, like you said, were we recording, the inf the conversation at that table was premium. Yes. That won't go in the podcast, Correct. but now you can get all of that. A hundred percent. Right now you're doing it for the wrong reasons, I believe. Like you fed me and my wife and all my friends that we came and we're going to leave. And I'm, I'm like, yo, that was, I like Neil. That was good. But it don't help you get no more views. It don't, but you won't forget it. I won't forget it. But I want to be a, be an impression in your if mind. If that's the perf if that's the, the objective, great. I don't do none of that. Yeah. And people never forget these interviews. Right. More often but, than well, not. What if you did though? A hundred percent. I just don't see the return. I, Everything but I is an immediate return. For either. sure, but there's got to be a focus. I, I put more focus on the actual interview than all the other stuff outside of it. Right. So I got to focus because these other things not going to go nowhere anyway. 
is, is hair. That's why we record that. That's you walk why, in my house, is hair in like it's bro, hair. That's why Zell and I are here. Yeah, the stuff we doing is going in Patreon. Yeah. So the fact and that I you, need a cut of that using me and my likeness yeah, for sure. For sure. The, the fact that we did the <laughs> breakfast and we ate it all out, I'm like, yo, good luck. You probably yeah. made me a couple thousand dollars. And, and I, I need, appreciate it. Yeah, and, and make sure I get a cut of that uh, a couple of thousand dollars, bro. <laughs> yo, but no, nah, yeah. So you gotta so, lean if that's what you want. So to. everything is. See, I don't quantify everything as a. Uh, Why am I doing this? You get what I'm like. I want you to remember, it's like, why did I have dinner at my house and invite y'all? What am I doing that for? No, that's I mean, a vibe. It's a, it's a, it's all, damn, yo, this dude that cares. He, no, a hundred percent. You no. might, you might think about me on a deal that you wasn't even think about me. Yo, this dude been just showing love. Yo, now I might got something for you. Yeah, you You super, can't quantify you're that. You're super rich, bro. No, I'm not. So, yo, I mean, <laughs> no. it's, it's all good. I'm saying for the audience. It's you want to give the experience, script. right? But like, I've just been big on experience, bro. Everything yeah. I want is like, how do I leave? I want, I want the best experience, bro. Yeah. When I took the mastermind to Dubai, I, like, I wanted to go to Dubai. Yeah, <laughs> like, y'all yeah, yeah, just get to sure. come with me too. I don't know. It's just been something I've been yeah. on, like trying to create. Experience. I think no, I no, I think it's dope. But intentionally recording the the beginning after, like for Patreon. Then it pays for itself. Okay. And got you it. get the experience. Yeah. Got it. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm not feeding. I'm not doing all what Neil's doing, just to let y'all know. Yeah. We're It'd be nice. Go ahead, man. Here, you know, my other thing is if I, you know, we record one day a week, and if I get to the point where I'm able to do eight episodes in the seven, that's a lot, but, you know, if I could do five to seven episodes in a day, to just have food, mm -hmm. we got to eat anyway. 100%. Just I'm gonna eat again when I leave here. Right. They got more salad. <laughs> Them biscuits was crazy. Them rolls was out of control. I'm gonna eat again, and I I'll never forget it. Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, man. But yeah, I think I think I think this is a good episode for part one of this. Any anything mm. you want to share that for our content creators are why is creating content critical right now? Like we. I'm doing a lot of this stuff, and again, I'm doing it for. I'm I'm looking at where YouTube will be a year from now if somebody didn't start quality production. I'm at a hundred episodes by then, in well, fifty two episodes or so, and just getting more. Like I'm on your show monthly. I'm that's a long play. That don't, that don't make me no money right now. Like mm -hmm. quantifiable. Like I'm making this from. I'm thinking about a year from now when they go on social proof and it's. 17 episodes just go watch neo for 17 times and yeah. get indoctrinated get understand who we like i was asking you like bro why some of these episodes had nothing to do with business or nothing and you like they need to get to know you mm -hmm. now i see so a lot of my plays now they aren't just get rich now it's like a year or two three now. years Stop that, man. You are though. No, I'm not. So bro. you get to see it from a different perspective. No, that's yeah, what's up. Yeah. But here's what I would say you're is crazy. if you're doing, you release what, one episode a week? Yeah. Another, if, if you're really going to lean in, I'd be going from event space to event space with the camera crew and that'd be an episode two because you're automatically selling the event space course. Yeah. You know what I mean? And the yeah. program. And, and we did that. We did that recently. Um, maybe I'll do another one not this did week. That. Do I'm saying not did that, but do it. Do it more. I, I mean, we got two on the. We have two on the. Two on the. Uh, on the YouTube. Let me ask you this: I'm not necessarily making them episodes, though. We just been posting them up on YouTube. You think we should make them episodes? I don't care how you do it, but but as long as we're so the the way the way you're framing what you're doing is you're saying I did it. I put two of them up there. Maybe I need to do another one. No, I'm need, saying this needs to be a format, something that you do, not right. something that you did. Okay. Like, yo, I every week you need to be going and getting Done. some Yeah, I'm gonna go I'm gonna go knock some off in the next seven days. There it is. Yeah. Got it. Anything you want to leave the people with, sir? Um we got a podcast summit coming up. You go to podcastsummit.com. Uh my my objective is to you where he said keyword podcast summit we. 
What, what's my percentage of that, bro? I don't know. Bro, Neo, we were supposed to talk about it, and now I'm like probably 100,000 in, and That's you ain't fine. give me no bread. Yeah, we still so. going to do it. I don't know. Go ahead. Finish. Podcastsummit.com. Yeah, podcastsummit.com. Social Proof Network. Yeah, but the objective is to own the podcast space. Like, I'm not just trying to, like, lean into just being a good interviewer, but I want to own the space because it's so young and it's so new and nobody knows what they're doing. That's why the people get in right now. You get to feel it out before the next six years, other people start getting into it. And you're already good by the time it's mainstream because podcasting isn't mainstream just yet. Some people are saying they're saturated right now. Yo, there's no there's no regulations around it. It's regulations around radio? Yes. What you mean? All right. Just so, so I understand. I'm, I'm not familiar. Do you know, if you put up a three-minute song on Spotify, mm-hmm. I think if you get a million downloads... Spotify pays out, I think, like $5,000 or something like that, Mm -hmm. right? Well, that's a three-minute song. I put out an hour and a half, an hour, hour and a half content twice a week, and Spotify gives me nothing. Yeah. When you put up a song, the artist makes money, right? The producer makes money. The person who made the beat makes money. The person who hit record makes money. The person that was in the studio that said, ooh, yo, you need to do la, 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 la on the hook. They make money. Everybody that's involved with this production of this song, this three-minute song, gets paid. Podcasting, nobody does. Mm. I've got 12 million, I think, uh, what was uh, on, um, I don't know. Lots and lots of millions of downloads on a podcast. For hours, though. It's not like a three-minute song. It's hours. And they give me nothing. The only person that gives me money is the advertiser says, I want to get in front of that audience. Podcasting isn't regulated yet. At some point, someone's going to say, hold on. This isn't fair. We need to have some sort of barrier or regulations around podcasting. Somebody. Yeah. Music used to be like... Before, everybody didn't get paid. That's why you got like the BMI and the ASCAPs because they're protecting everybody that's responsible for the production of this song. Podcasting doesn't have that yet. One day, the podcaster, the person who hits record, the person that's like uploading, all those people will have to get paid just like music. But it's not there yet. So it's not saturated. Mm. Instagram is saturated. How many people do you follow on Instagram? A lot. Like how many? 3,800 or 5,000 I'm how many podcasts you follow on your podcast app? How many are like that you right. subscribe to? Maybe 10. And that's a lot. I got maybe six or seven. Yeah. Is mine one of them? Yeah, no, maybe. Dang. I might be following on, on YouTube. As soon as I turn oh, my phone on, I'll make yeah. sure I do it. So, but I, but you're not a podcaster subscribe. yet, so. How long? How many episodes I got to do before I'm it a It ain't pod- about episodes. It's I'm a podcaster, like, bro. I was a podcaster not, before you was a podcaster, it, But man. you're not identifying as a podcaster. When y'all think of Neo, do you think podcaster? Now, maybe y'all on the And the he talking in the comments. Yes. But I'm talking about, when you think of Neo, you don't think podcaster. You think digital yes, marketer. You, you think of podcaster. All right. We're going to see. No, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> when you think of me, you think of podcaster. Facts. Only because we lean in. Yeah. So. All right. Let's get to it. Y'all, that wraps up this episode, man. Thank y'all for tuning in again. We just getting started. I am a podcast. Let's go. No way he talking. Let's about. give him a round of applause. Neo's, y'all can clap. Y'all can clap. Neo's a podcaster, man. And if y'all interested <laughs> in joining the Social Proof Network, let us know, man. Let us know. <laughs> My God. We out. <laughs>